Hello everyone, my name is Xiao. I'm from the RCS lab at the University of Waterloo. Today, I'll be presenting a paper, SKQ Event Scheduling in a Traditional OS Kernel. I did the work with my colleagues, Hao Yugu and Ali Mashtide. Applications and hardware have evolved tremendously. Modern server applications span hundreds to thousands of nodes to service and user requests. Users experience request latency dominated by the tail latency of any node in the request service tree. Recent research systems such as Shinango and Shinjuku propose using kernel bypass and custom data points to solve the latency problem. However, most modern server applications are still built on top of traditional OSs. Solving the latency problem in a traditional OS kernel is hard, as we have to carefully trade off the benefit of our system with the overhead to the rest of the OS. We benchmarked multiple server applications, such as memcached, and we identified two sources of latency. The first source of latency is cache misses. Cache misses come from connection migration from RSS and the kernel. When RSS migrates a connection to a different core, the kernel processes that connection on a new core, whereas the application still processes that connection on the old core, leading to cache misses. However, applications do not detect any of this as information is not available in user space. To put this into perspective, in our PC server, we measured up to 77% of two cache misses are due to connection migration and are thus avoidable. The second source of latency is workload imbalance. Workload imbalance causes some threads to be oversaturated and others to be undersaturated. We benchmark the total processing time difference between the most and the least busy threads in two applications. In memcached, which is a uniform application, the difference is 1.4%, whereas in GIS application, with the ZIF-like request service time distribution, the difference is 46%. Most server applications we studied use event-driven programming, which relies on the underlying kernel's event facility. On older systems, this will be pull and select. On newer systems, we have FreeBSD KQ and Linux ePoll. However, even the newer systems were designed nearly 20 years ago when there were few cores on servers. We decided to look at the latency problem in kernel event facility as it provides maximum visibility into both the OS and the application. A typical event-driven application workflow involves the application registering events to kernel event objects and the worker threads pulling on kernel event objects in event loops. There are two event-driven programming models, the one-to-one -one model and the one-to-n model. In the one-to-one -one model, each worker thread creates its own private copy of the kernel event object. The one-to-one -one model has good scalability and connection affinity, however, Moving events around thread is hard as it requires multiple system calls. The one-to-one -one model is widely used by modern server applications. In the one-to-n model, all worker threads share a single instance of the kernel event object. The one-to-n model makes it easy to move events between threads. However, the model suffers from poor scalability and affinity, mainly due to log contention. As a result, the one-to-one -one model is only using a few low-throughput services such as Microsoft Exchange Server. SKQ is the first system that uses event scheduling to solve the latency problem in a traditional OS kernel. We introduced a new scalable architecture for using SKQ in the one-to-one -one model. SKQ internally uses event scheduling or event placement to reduce latency from cache misses and workload imbalance. Additionally, SCQ provides applications with event delivery control, such as event prioritization and event pinning. In a typical SCQ application, the main thread creates a single SCQ object and sets the desired scheduling policy. All worker threads create events from the shared object in event loops. SCQ transparently schedules events across all worker threads based on the set scheduling policy. For applications already using the one-to-one -one model, using SKQ requires no change. For applications using the one-to-one -one model, developers only need to replace all private KQ objects with a shared SKQ object. SKQ creates a thread private event queue with fine-grained locking called KVQ per application thread. 
we use the event scheduler to queue triggered events across all KEV queues and to achieve event delivery control. So the main idea is that we achieve the best of both worlds via scheduling. We expose a one-to-one -one model to applications for better schedulability, but internally, we use a one-to-one -one model for multi-core scalability. We benchmark the scalability of both XQQ and KQ using the one-to-one -one and the one-to-one -one model. We use POSIX pipes instead of sockets in this experiment to push the throughput and to eliminate any interference from the kernel's networking stack. As we can see from the benchmark, in the one-to-one -one model, both KQs and XQQs scale linearly with each additional core. This is because the one-to-one -one model naturally has little to no lock contention. In the one-to-one model, XQ also scales linearly due to its improved design and reduced lock contention. However, KQ starts to see scalability bottleneck at as few as five cores due to its less scalable design. XQQ provides a modest performance improvement to KQ even when used in the one-to-one -one model, which lacks event scheduling. We tested both systems in memcached running the Facebook Mutilate workload. As shown in the benchmark, XQ performs equally or better than KQ throughout and provides a 33% lower tail latency at peak throughput. Throughout the presentation, we will use the one-to-one -one XQQ as our benchmark baseline to isolate the benefit of event scheduling from architectural improvements. XQQ offers three categories of scheduling policies, cache locality policies, load balancing policies, and hybrid policies. Implementing efficient event scheduling in XQQ is hard, as you can service up to millions of events per second to user-space applications. This means that there's little overhead available for making scheduling decisions. We have to carefully trade off the CPU cost, memory footprint, and log contention in both statistic collection and data structure accesses. To put this into perspective, in memcached, it takes about 15,000 cycles to process a single request. A single L3 cache miss takes about 400 cycles. This will result in a 2.7% drop in memcached's throughput. The first category is cache locality policies, where we reduce cache misses. The CPU affinity policy always delivers the event to the triggering core. This is the core where the kernel processed the I.O. request. When a worker thread on the same core later accesses the I.O. data, the data will more likely to be hot in cache. In other words, the CPU affinity policy benefits from cache locality in the networking stack and allows applications to follow connection migration. The Q affinity policy always pins the event to the first core where the event was triggered. The, this policy benefits from cache locality in user space at the same connections is always processed by the same worker thread. We benchmark both cache locality policies in memcached with the Facebook Mutilate workload. Memcached presents a uniform workload where latency is mostly dominated by the cache locality. From the benchmark, memcached with the one-to-one -one model reached maximum low latency throughput as 600K. Both policies extended the low latency throughput by 9% and reduced the tail latency at peak throughput by 26%. We expect this modest improvement in memcached as memcached has short and uniform request service times. To compare CPU affinity policy with Q affinity policy, we measured the L2 cache misses of both policies in an RPC server. The RPC server presents a uniform workload just like memcached. As we can see from the table, both policies lower the L2 cache misses across the entire networking stack. The CPU affinity policy also has 31.2% less L2 cache misses compared to Q affinity policy, as CPU affinity policy follows connection migration. We also benchmark the CPU affinity policy on imbalanced workload. We use RockCB running the Facebook ZPDB workload, which consists of puts, gets, and slow seek requests. As we can see from the benchmark, cache locality policies don't really help here, as they do not provide any load balancing. To address imbalanced workloads, SCQ also introduces two load balancing policies. The best of two policy selects a better KEV queue out of two random KEV queues based on the estimated processing delay. 
The processing delay is estimated based on the number of events and the average processing time per event of each KAVQ. We also benchmarked best of two using RocksDB running the same workload. As shown, the best of two policy extends the load latency throughput compared to the CPU affinity policy. This is because of better load balancing. However, the tail latency of best of two still ramps up at relatively low throughput. Applications can also enable work stealing to allow idle threads to steal work from busy threads. In the paper, we listed the set of optimizations we use to ensure minimum interference between threads. Work stealing can be combined with best of two to enable SCQ to react faster to individual requests. In the same RockCB benchmark, compared to using best of two policy alone, best of two combined with work stealing further extends the low latency throughput due to better responsiveness to slow seek requests. Applications can also combine load balancing policies with cache locality policies to create hybrid policies. In that case, SCQ compares the winner of best of two with another cache local KVQ determined by the cache locality policy. SQ also applies a constant cache miss penalty to the winner of best of two to compensate for the expected cache misses. By combining the CPU affinity policy with best of two and work saving, the hybrid policy achieves the best performance among all other scheduling policies in the RockCV benchmark. As you can see from the graph, the hybrid policy achieves 27 times higher low latency throughput and over 1,000 times lower tail latency compared to the one-to-one -one model. We also benchmark XKQ against a state-of-the-art kernel bypass system, Shenango. We use an RPC server with a uniform 10 microsecond request service time distribution and compare the difference in low latency throughput of 150 microseconds. As you can see from the benchmark, Shenango achieved around 1.7 times higher low latency throughput compared to SKQ. In a uniform workload with a short request service time distribution, the primary bottleneck is a system call overhead which the kernel bypass system solves. We use the same RPC server, but this time with a uniform 20 microsecond request service time distribution, and we compare the same low latency throughput. In this case, Shenango only achieved 1.5 times higher low latency throughput compared to SKQ. This is because an increase in average request service time weakens the impact of system call overhead. As our last experiment, we use Z-flag request service time distribution with an average request service time of around 20.5 microseconds. We compare the same low latency throughput, and Shenango in this case only achieved 1.17 times higher low latency throughput. Notice that this workload has similar average request service time as the previous one. The imbalanced workload further reduces the impact of the system call overhead and enables SKQ to benefit more from its scheduling policies. Putting the results together, we can see that kernel bypass systems such as Shenango excel in workloads with short and uniform request service times. This is because in these workloads, the primary bottleneck is the system call overhead, which kernel bypass system solve. However, in workloads with slower or imbalanced request service times, the difference between kernel bypass and event scheduling is less significant. This is because these workloads mask the system call overhead to some extent and benefit more from event scheduling. We would like to point out that the comparison between SKQ and Shenango is inherently unfair due to different OSs and different networking stacks, which in Shenango's case lacks TCP congestion control. Based on our evaluation, we recommend the CPU affinity policy for uniform workloads. As for imbalanced or IO heavy workloads, we recommend the hybrid policy. SKQ provides a practical solution to the latency problem in a traditional OS kernel. We only look at the kernel event facilities and we believe that there are more optimization opportunities elsewhere in the kernel to solve the latency problem. Please see the full paper for more details about event prioritization, more benchmarks, and important optimizations. Our source code and benchmarks are also available online.